Good morning. So I've, I've brought my car in a bag here, and also under wraps. I've done large-scale traditional manufacturing. We're at a turning point, the crux in our relationship with ourselves and the planet we live on. How we make things over the next 30 to 40 years will have a decisive impact on whether that relationship will be a productive one or existentially destructive. Manufacturing is actually a decision about our survival. I will focus on a few key ideas and a new approach to large-scale complex manufacturing, such as the manufacturing of cars. A few years ago, my life's journey led me to the electric car movement as an entrepreneur. My company designed and built one of the first all-electric cars. This slide shows me with Gary Locke, then the Secretary uh, of Commerce, in front of our, uh, what was and is a giga battery manufacturing plant uh, in Tianjin, China. I look happy, it was a big moment, we thought we were saving the world. So what's wrong with that picture? What's wrong is that we were buying into a vision that could destroy us. Around the same time that we were opening that plant, I had my son working up in northeast uh, China, in Harbin, on our chassis assembly uh, line. At the time, the pollution there was 40 times higher than what is considered safe for humans. 40 times. Through these endeavors, I came to understand all the inputs, materials, and energy that go into building a complex product like a car and their combined impact on us and our environment. Well, today's debate focuses almost exclusively on how we fuel our cars. And what this chart shows is that when you look at the overall uh, health and environmental impact of cars, all electric cars are slightly better. The brutal truth is that if you look at the emissions of a car over their entire life cycle, you discover that tailpipe emissions are just the tip of the iceberg. A far greater percentage of a car's total emissions come from the materials and energy required to manufacture it. The mining, processing, manufacturing, and disposal, not the driving. As this chart shows you, manufacturing, which is the column to the right of each of these cars, contributes far, far more environmental and health cost than tailpipe exhaust. That's the full picture. So let me say that again. A far greater percentage of a car's total emissions come from the materials and energy required to manufacture it. The conclusion from this is simple. How we make cars is actually a much bigger problem than how we fuel our cars. Car manufacturing has had a greater impact on us than any other product. It has largely determined how we've organized our communities, how we've constructed the environment around us, the quality of the air we breathe, and the chemicals we absorb. Over the last about 113 years, we've built about two billion cars. But the development of the world is accelerating rapidly. And over a much shorter period of time, we'll build another four billion. So over the next 30 to 40 years, if trends hold, we'll go from two billion to six billion cars. Conclusion, we need to dematerialize to dramatically reduce the material and energy required to build cars, and we need to do it now. Uh, that's a 68 Barracuda that we raced in the 1970s. <laughs> Growing up in Cleveland, I was a hot rodder. My brothers and I worked out of our parents' garage. We didn't have any money, but it didn't matter much. 
you could buy and create high-performance cars with only hundreds of dollars. We made up for our lack of money with shared ingenuity and hard work and loved it. We conceived and constructed something we could actually use and then continuously modified and improved it, essentially doing rapid versioning of hardware. So I asked myself, how can we bring that rapid versioning back to large-scale automotive construction? To democratize car manufacturing, we need to create a new technology platform that empowers small teams, similar to the way Arduino empowered people in electronics. As you know, Arduino is a modular platform that hides its complexity behind an interface that is easy to use. It has enabled an explosion of hardware and software innovation. Because of Arduino, many of the latest tech products from Kickstarter devices to the Internet of Things to home automation have been built not by huge corporations, but by small, nimble teams. At Divergent Micro Factories, we set out to build an industrial strength Arduino. Call it an Arduino for cars or a Carduino. We call the key enabling technology a node. It's a 3D printed alloy connector that joins aerospace grade carbon fiber tubing into standardized building objects that enable a small team to design and build car chassis ranging from two seat sports cars to pickup trucks. Just like with Arduino, it hides its complexity and is simple to use. The node based chassis solves the bigger problems we've set out to address. It drives dematerialization and democratization. A traditional chassis can weigh over 1,000 pounds, whereas our prototypes, chassis weighs about 102 pounds, 61 pounds of aluminum nodes and 41 pounds of carbon fiber, even as it's much stronger and more durable. All of the nodes and carbon fiber tubing that make up this car fit into this 120 liter Patagonia uh, backpack. Let me show you what uh, a node up close looks like. So these were 3D direct metal laser center printed, uh, and then we used these to connect the larger structural carbon fiber of the chassis. The end result the chassis thus requires dramatically less material and energy to produce. A dematerialized car is greener, lighter, and safer, and can be made locally. It will mean less wear on our roads and fewer fatalities in accidents. What this shows is, and, and we've used the uh, Argon Labs model of life cycle pollution, environmental and health costs generated by the production and use of automobiles, and we've plugged in the actual numbers from our vehicle and other vehicles. And what this shows is a super lightweight car built with Divergent Microfactory's new technology contributes just a third of the total health and environmental damage of an 85 kilowatt hour all electric car, for example. Our objective is to drive that down to a quarter or less. And these vehicles can be made locally and built to last. Whereas a traditional car factory, for those of us who've run these, would cost hundreds of millions of dollars, one of our micro factories would have a startup cost of under $20 million and produce up to 10,000 cars a year. If we centralize the node manufacturer, we think it is possible to create design and assembly micro factories that would cost less than $5 million to set up. Just as the PC democratized the computer industry and Arduino democratized electronics, so our solution will give small teams all over the world the tools to develop and build innovative new car designs that will meet the needs of local communities. 
Now, because of divergent microfactories, you no longer have to be a billionaire to design and build new cars at scale. Imagine hundreds or even thousands of small teams around the world bringing real innovation to the car industry for the first time in nearly 100 years through a network of pioneering teams, diverging and sharing, accelerating the pace of innovation while protecting our health and our environment, and then applying that know-how to other complex structures. If you want to find the next new thing in automobiles, and you talk to any automobile engineer, you look for a new production system. Not, <clears throat> excuse me, not a different drivetrain embedded in the same old production system first set up in the 1920s. Some would say that this is a pipe dream. So our team used the new technology base I am speaking about to build the world's first fully functional 3D printed supercar. first instance of this new technology, which is super light and super low impact, we wanted to also make super cool. So it has a, a 700 horsepower bi-fuel motor. It can use either compressed natural gas or gasoline. It goes from zero to 60 in just over two seconds, and it's incredibly light, about 1,400 pounds. But most importantly, it's light in the impact it leaves on our beautiful planet. And with that, I'd like to introduce Blade, which is the first prototype that we've built. Which, hey, and I'd, I'd like to take time to, to say thank you to my team. Uh, We've had a fabulous group of super experienced engineers with literally hundreds of years of aerospace and automotive engineering expertise who've put over a relatively short period of time, a couple of years, all of their heart, all of their know-how, and all of their will into getting into this point, uh, us to this point. So thank you, team. And what I'd... And to you, what I'd say to all you hot rodders, hackers, people that like to uh, create things, people that want to stir things up, come join us. Come to our booth, meet the team, see the tools we use, create your own teams. Because together, we're about to create what we think is the most interesting, exciting, and important chapter yet in the history of the automobile. Thanks.